speak to the people who don't have their hands raised, okay? Do not worry. Do not worry. I was you when I graduated. I did not have a job. All my friends had jobs. I was in a full-on panic. I didn't know what to do. So I, a year after I graduated, I started my job search. I had my resume tape. I lived at home. I had my resume tape in one hand, and I was just ready to get this job. So I got a brand new green suit. I got my hair all blown out, and I had a job, one job interview in Richmond, Virginia. My mom lives in Alexandria. So I told my mom, I'm gonna drive to Richmond, I'm gonna go get that job, I'm gonna come back here, pack my stuff up, and I'm moving to Richmond. So I drove to Richmond, Virginia, my mom was like, you can do it, she's all always positive. So I drive to Richmond and I get to the newsroom, I'm like, this is good. I am gonna sit there and I am going to date him. And I was gonna just Gio, she to Gio. The news director put my tape in the machine, he watched it for like a minute, he popped it out. And he said, you know, I'm really sorry, but you're not ready for Richmond. And I had not thought of that. Like, that was my only <laughs> plan. And I said, is there something wrong with my tape? He said, no, you're just not very good, but I want to wish you good luck. <laughs> and come back, you know, in a few years, you know, bye-bye, like that, just bye-bye. And, and I'm standing there, and, he, and I said, but I, I really want to get this job. He said, as, as I was leaving, he said, but wait a second, Hoda, I got a buddy of mine who's hiring you in Roanoke, Virginia. He's going to a conference tomorrow, but if you catch him tonight, I bet you he'll hire you. I said, I said tell, please tell him I'm coming. So I called my mom. I was like, I did not want Richmond. I want Roanoke. Roanoke's where I want to live. I drove to Roanoke, Virginia. I get to the newsroom. I'm like, this is pretty good. I'm going to sit there and I will date him. And this will work out just fine in Roanoke, Virginia, too. The guy puts my tape in the machine. He plays it for a while and he stops it. He said, you know what, Hope? I'm sorry. You're just not ready for Roanoke. I'm thinking, who in the hell's not ready for rowing us? <laughs> Apparently, me. So he said, but I want to wish you good luck, you know, bye-bye, like that. And I said, you know, is there something wrong with my tape? He said, you're just not very good, but I want to wish you the best of luck. So I'm walking out. He said, wait, before you go, he said, I've got a buddy of mine in Memphis who's hiring. But here's the deal. He's going to the conference I'm going to. He's leaving in the morning. If you catch him before he leaves, I bet he'll hire you. I said, tell him I am coming. Now, I don't know if you guys know, but Memphis, Tennessee is a long, skinny state, and Memphis is at the other end. I drove all night long. I was like, I am getting this job. I get there, I meet the news director, he looks at me, he puts the tape in, he plays it. He says, Hoda, I'm sorry, you're just not ready for Memphis. I said, what is wrong with this tape, or me, or what is it? And he said, I'm just sorry, but, but good luck to you, you know, bye-bye. So as I'm leaving, he goes, wait, 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 before you go, he said, I got a buddy of mine who will hire you. You guys, I was in the car driving for 10 days. I was sleeping in the car like a bag lady. I mean, that's what I was doing. I had no money. I just kept driving. I got rejected three times in Birmingham. Do you know where Dothan, Alabama is? Exactly. Nobody knows. I got rejected in Dothan, okay? I got rejected in the Panhandle of Florida. I was gone everywhere. 27 news directors told me no. 27 news directors told me no. My mom needed the car. I'd been gone 10 days. She's like, I need the car. I was like, okay, I'm coming home. So I started driving north. I didn't have a map, but I didn't care. I was depressed. I had James Taylor on. I was going to go north, and then I was going to drive over to Virginia. I got lost in Mississippi. Okay? There was a sign. You know how they say God gives you a sign? There was a sign. It said, Greenville, our eye is on you, CBS. I was like, I'm going to go get rejected in Greenville, and then I'm coming home. I get there, I meet the news director, he puts my tape in, he plays it, he watches it. I am watching him watch my tape. He's watching the whole horrible 23 minutes. When he stops the tape, he looks at me, and I'll never forget his words. He said, Hoda, I like what I see. I said, you do? I mean, I could not believe this man liked my tape. He hired me. He said, here's the deal. You're going to get paid $12,000 a year, and you're going, you know, you're going to sleep with a scanner. If you miss a story, you're fired, okay? I was like, thank you. I was in love. I made more money working at Ponderosa than I did at my first job, but I was in love. I couldn't pay my bills. I had to juggle which bills I paid, but I was in love. So the first life lesson I learned is don't do it for the money. You know what I mean? Don't be happy every other Thursday on payday. Be happy all the days in between. So the first life lesson is find what you love 
and then figure out how to get paid for it. Find what you love and figure out how to get paid for it. That's really important. Morning, I'm Ann Martin. Like, I'm not Ann Martin. I knew I wasn't Ann Martin. I just read it. Well, all the way through the show, I kept blowing it. It was like, you know, it's like you can't stop messing up. It's like you're on a toboggan flying down the mountain. I was screaming in my head like, end this show. It ended. When it was over, the crew was like, hey, nice try. <laughs> I have a mic. I was dying, okay? The news director was gone. Everyone had deserved the newsroom. It was so bad. So what I do when I'm depressed is I go to the grocery store. So I was looking. I was in the ice cream section. And while I was there, this freaky looking woman came up to me. Okay, her hair was nuts. She had just a few teeth. And she looked at me and she goes, Oh my God, I felt so sorry for you. <laughs> I could have stayed in the fetal position and had that ice cream and quit my job and gone back home. But instead, I went into my boss and I said, look, I messed up yesterday. Please give me another chance. Please give me another chance. And he gave me another chance. So it's not about the fall. It's about what happens immediately after. It's about what happens right after. Everybody falls. It's about what happens after. You either get up or you curl up, okay? So when you fall, and someone said this to me, I love this. Fall on your back. Because if you fall on your back, you can see up. And if you can see up, you can get up. And you can keep going and going and going. That's important. The fall, the get up, that's important. All right. They would love that. No, they would love that. There's no shame in going home and living with your parents and laying on the couch for weeks, months, even years. It's, no, it's whatever makes you happy. A friend of mine bet me 50 bucks, I wouldn't say that, so I got 50 bucks. <laughs> this is a good time to thank your parents, you guys. Again, a big round of applause for all the parents. Woo! Yeah. I worked at the network for a lot of you just once in a lifetime, or in my case, hopefully twice in a lifetime. Uh, having kids, like all of these things are very important. So just take a second and, and look around. Sometimes we miss our moments. I was at the Olympics, you guys, and it was the Parade of Nations, and everyone was on the phone. I remember thinking, God, this is your moment. You're on the phone. I can't believe it. But this right here, right now, is your moment. So just take a second. Put your cameras down. Look around. Like God gave us a